The question that is uh, on the minds of many, many people, which is the best religion? Is it uh, um, Hinduism, Confucianism, um, Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism? I will tell you the truth is this. First of all, let us define some things here. What many people are talking about as religion, they're talking that's a denomination more than religion. Um, a denomination is a legal body that has uh, um, prescribed sort of precepts and, and doctrines that they you, you know entirely believe in. But on the other hand, religion is, uh, and I'm trying to get the definition here, which I learned in um, a course I did in teaching religion that is almost uh, 25, 30 years ago. It is the cognitive, affective, psychomotor experiences of an individual or individuals as they attempt to harmonize their lives with a power that they perceive as having ultimate control over their will and destiny. So please beg to differ with me here that Judaism would be a, relig a, a denomination, Hinduism a denomination, Buddhism a denomination, Confucianism a denomination, all these things that they call in religion or they is just Catholicism denomination. But when they say it's the cognitive, affective, psychomotor experiences that is religion, uh, it means that, you know, the way you think, the way you feel, um, your total experience um, in relationship to this um, being that uh, you believe is God, that's religion. So if we accept this as what religion is, then we could say that since there are two opposing forces out there that are sort of a, um, prescribing and recommended to worship each or worship them, then you only have two religions. And these two are Satan and then you have God. Before Satan became an evil person, there was just one religion. That was the godly thing. Um, and uh, at the same time, we could look at which is the oldest uh, religion. And, and of course, it's got to be a godly religion because Satan um, decided to go evil and became a, a, an object of worship more than 6,000 years ago. Um, but from the beginning, everybody worshipped God. Even Satan himself worshipped God. Um, and, and so, uh, just the other day, a guy was telling me that, uh, what about these people that live in a land that is just Confucianism? What what how can you say then that um, the God is so evil to to, to just just um, say that they are lost because you know they were all Confucius? And I told the guy, I said, you know what? I didn't go into all the definition of religion and damnation, but it's this: people who are in these different um, denomination territories, many of the ones who are true would go beyond what is just the local pronounce in other words um when worshiping the sun and the moon and the stars is the religion some people are saying you know what i think that i need to go beyond that there's somebody that made the moon and the stars that really need to be worshipped and they're searching in their minds and and they may not crystallize it as the way a person in the west might crystallize that there's a god and one god and all in the whole nine yards but they're they're going beyond the stars and moons and, 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 and this is what it is because as i told this guy i said you know what um we believe that uh the lord is going to return when everybody in the world has been warned that he needs to be served all right and and, and serving him is the best thing for you um but humans may not be able to reach everybody and god is not relying on humans only he has his word the scriptures he has nature when people look at how the birds are um, going to be you know moving from north to south winter and summer the butterflies and all that they have to conclude that there's some hand that is guiding this operation a bird is not that smart to be able to know the months and the year and feel the winter and know where to go but God is the one that takes them over there. And when they look at the water, the water cycle, when they look at science and nature and all that, they have to conclude that there's an intelligent hand that is, and, and they want to get in touch with that hand because it is so awesome. 
that is what is important and so whether they grow up in the oh by the way uh, in the West here um, we believe that you know the Western thought Judeo Christianity thing is the way to go but there are a lot of people out here in the West who um, let me see oh, if I could characterize it this way um, I think the majority of people that are saying they're Christian is going to be lost the majority of them um, and in the in the um, again in, in these other countries that have these uh, other type of um, uh, denominations um, the majority of them are still going to be lost there's a minority in in, in, in Confucianism that can be looking beyond you know whatever their symbols and whatever their great montages they're looking beyond that and in Christianity here, we think that, oh, I, here I'm in the West, I'm in Christianity. Yes, yes, yes. But they're not doing walking the talk, as it were. And so uh, that includes me too. Uh, and I guess you, right? So, but we have, a, we have a chance, nevertheless, every day to renew and to, you know, forget the past and to say, you know, we're moving on here. And especially as the new year just um, dawned. Um, you know, to rededicate our lives and, and you know, want to, you know, serve the uh, true God. And so, um, it, it doesn't matter, it seems, uh, where you go, because some people are in search of the real great denomination, which is the denomination that is going to heaven. And even if there is such, and I think there is such a denomination, but even in that denomination, you have the enemy who has infiltrated it, and he's trying to subvert it but they are still a minority a remnant the bible calls it a remnant um it's it, in revelation says that um uh i should i should look up that scripture to recite it um, carefully carefully um talks of the remnant um here's the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of god uh, and the testimony of jesus um the remnant you know um the remnant is um, the end or a small part of the big part and um, in every denomination you have a small set of people who are going beyond whatever the um, montage is and, and especially since God has a, a church because you see God has always had people serving him from the from the beginning right to the end you had Cain uh, you had Abel who was doing the right thing Cain killed him and then Seth was born and he continued it we had Moses we had no Noah. We had so many different people, and um, the deal is this: that Christianity, you could say Christianity is the oldest religion, but to use the word Christianity is going to be disturbing, um, because uh, in heaven, although they worship Christ, it probably wasn't called Christianity or nothing. And in the Garden of Eden, um, the Adam and Eve served Jesus. And uh, when they sinned, he, he gave them, you know, the sacrificial system, which was because you see, when Christ was creating the world, the question was asked: uh, Suppose all these people don't fulfill and, and 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 are faithful, and they get deceived by the devil and, and become our enemy. What can happen? Jesus said, "My blood, I'm going to go and die for them." And that's why the scripture says that it's the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world, even before the world was um, uh, created he promised that he's going to die to return man to god and with adam and eve when they were promised by god the day you eat of this fruit the day you even think of it the day you decide that you're going to do it even before you eat it you'll be dead but it happened and of course if she had dropped dead i think that would have been the answer but uh, i mean he would have realized that oops this thing is for real but <laughs> i mean jesus stepped in to save eve uh, I mean, he loved her. He, she is one of his creation, and um, and in doing that, it set up Adam too to fall into the same sin. I don't know if he had to do it twice to say, "My blood." Uh, I guess he does that every time we sin, and God's ready to knock us out. Even us today, when we go out and we do things that are contrary to what God has, you know, said we should do, you're gonna kill the neighbor. Or you see that nice girl walking and you know throwing her nice self around you say mm, if i could only spend a little time with her oh lord this would be so good even calling the lord's name <laughs> in the action but that is sin too and um you know um god jesus steps in and say my blood my father but you know as i'm on this when you look at sex and and womanizing i mean it is something that um 
I've thought of over the years. When when you have sex with a person, it, it's more than just in the screw part, you know what I mean? Uh, and the foreplay and whatever else people add on. It is you and this woman are amalgamating and becoming one. This is what God said, and this is why you, you reserve sex and all that for a committed relation. A committed relation in the sense that there's marriage. And, um, you know, my first wife, for example, I mean, I'm not a, you know, faithful guy, whatever, but a lot of people thought I got married in December. Normally, people get married in the summer after school is over. I was in the dormitory and I got married in December. I, I had to leave the dormitory. And so, a space that should have been freed from September, um, I took it up and then I quit in, in December. So, they had to get somebody to come in to take my space in the dormitory. And that was an obstructing, you know, obstruction in the program. But a lot of people thought that, oh, he got married in December because he was he got a girl pregnant. I mean, I, I was a kind of worldly wise guy. I mean, if I get a girl pregnant and I know it's going to be a problem, I mean, many of my friends got stick up like that. But I mean, there's there's the abortion. I mean, that's also more evil. But I mean, I didn't have to get caught up like that. Me and my wife had no sex. Even the minister that's marrying us, you hear him praying that, oh, Lord, bless our womb. And, and, and you hear the laughter in his voice like, oh, the womb is he blessed already. Because his son knocked up. In other words, the preacher, his son, we were in college together. He got all this design for the boy. He wanted to go and get a master's and don't. Yeah. Got this girl he loved and he really went studying all kind of scholarship. He just wanted to finish his course. He could go and marry this girl and be happy. And they wanted to go on. So he just got her pregnant and then, you know, they had to marry him off. And that was the end of that. So he figured I'm I'm like that. But no, we had no sex. And, and even when we went down to the uh, health office to do the family planning thing, uh, the person is telling us that, Oh, wait, you, if you're pregnant already, you can't use family planning. I mean, we, we never had sex. She's not pregnant, you know. Um, but sex is something that you, there, there's a part of you that is amalgamated. I don't understand it clearly, but there's something that, it, it, I mean, we talk in the Caribbean of firewood. Firewood, um, you know, it's easy to start firewood. In other words, if you light a fire, with a wood and then you out the fire and you try to light it again it's easier to light that one the second time than the first time so it means that your ex for example my, my first wife I mean even though she's married to whatever whoever when I show up or if she shows up you know you have to say well listen we've decided we are divorced and um, this is it but it's easier for you to get together again than to start a new relationship because I mean, there's something in there that, as I said, I don't understand that, you know, puts us in, in a position that uh, vulnerable to each other, perhaps. People marry five, six times over and over and over because there is that connection and I don't understand it clearly. And so um, uh, I have this technique where you could see two people walking on the road and you could know whether they're husband or wife because there's something you see in some connection you see in there. They depend on each other. There's something in there, you know. So, um, you know, you, you just have to waste your life in trying to get with all these women and all that and have peace in your life everywhere as opposed to, you know, having it one place. So the, the people who are married, you know, early and they lived all their life, they've saved themselves a whole bunch of grief, a whole bunch of, you know, sharing life with all these people down the street. Um, but we live in an evil world and things don't work, you know, the way it ought to go, etc. But, um... This, this this whole thing of religion, however, is uh, such an amazing thing that there are just two religions. You're either serving God or you're serving the devil. And you could be in God's church and still serving the devil, being a hypocrite. You could be in Satan's church and still reaching out and serving God. Reached out to the, to the extent where God will accept you and save you. Oh, by the way, when Christ comes the second time, and uh, Jesus comes the second time and he is... Um, save the people who followed him or chose him and a lot of people in Hinduism in Confucianism and um, Buddhism and all these isms in the East and Christianity a lot of people are gonna be disappointed in in the West in Christianity oh I thought Harry was gonna make it he was so pious but you don't know privately Harry was kind of a Satanist um, in in my church for example uh, Many of our ministers are um, not true. 
they, they, they've joined, they've infiltrated the church to sabotage it. They, they came from the Antichrist organization. I went to college with some of them and um, they've positioned themselves and uh, they're thinking that they could support it. But I mean, I, I recognize this guy when he was in class with me that he's not for real. And, um, you know, I read one of his books the other day that said that uh, after 30 years of being a member, oh, he's come with this great book. And he's threatening to write that book since his day one in college. So it's, it's a kind of, what to call it, um, um, paradigm. It's a shift away from orthodoxy and taking you way off from the moon, you know. Um, but what can happen is that he thinks that, uh, you see, the scripture says that, um, uh, if it were possible, the very elect will be deceived. It's not possible to deceive the elect. The elect are those who will go to heaven. Now, the question is, uh, would God be choosing people and discriminating against others? No. When it says many are called but few are chosen, uh, there are two Greek words in there, two Greek words, uh, klotoi and eklotoi. I'm not sure which in which order they go but when he's saying many are called many hear the clarion call the announcement is made in the whole village come to this festival here uh, the master is here and he wants to meet with everybody some people are gonna forget some will get drunk they don't even remember some people are gonna got to go to work and a whole bunch of other things but those who sacrifice and go those are the ones that would be um, the, the clothes toy right those are the ones that are going to be chosen. So it, it, it is everybody. He sends the message out to everybody, and I am the one who will determine whether I'm chosen or not by accepting. And so um, again, you know, the message is out there. Nature, um, everything is is kind of speaking of the love of God, right? As the Spanish put it, uh, "Cuando el cielo y las estrellas me hablan del amor de Dios y y, a, y las flores." Alaberse buscan el color del sol. En ese mo, en es, pienso en ese momento, en, en ese, um, pienso en ese uh, momento, um, and so on. So it is saying that when the heaven and the stars speak to me of the love of God, and the flower opens itself to the heat of the sun, in this moment. Um, I think of the, you know, of God and so on and um, and so forth. So, nature is speaking out there and people are listening and uh, many of them are going to choose to accept um, the, 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 the Creator. And so, <laughs> it's going to take, um, some people believe it's going to take a week to get to heaven. <clears throat> but I thought of it, it could be, it depends on when he comes and when he's leaving. Because you'd want everybody to keep a Sabbath. Um, because his command says, remember the Sabbath day. And people in these Eastern religions don't even know the Sabbath day. But uh, it's important to, you know, keep his law to, to go to heaven. And so he's going to take a week off. So some are going to be baptized going through the clouds, the water. Um, some are going to also have a Sabbath before they get to heaven. So when they get to heaven... They would have been baptized and they would have also kept the sabbath so um there are two religions and in every denomination god has people who are looking for him and he's going to save those people and he's going to you know accommodate them and make sure that everything that uh they need to accomplish before getting to heaven would be accomplished